Coming up today on Airborne, the FAA certifies the Falcon 2000S and the 2000 XLS, and the sports car inspired Sky Leader 400 LSA is introduced. I'm Ashley Hale, welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. The FAA has certified the two newest members of the Falcon family of business jets, the Falcon 2000S and the Falcon 2000 LXS. The approvals came just days after the aircraft received their EASA type certificate. Unveiled in May of 2011, the Falcon 2000S is the new entry level jet in the Falcon family. At 0 0.80 Mach, the Falcon 2000S has a range of 3,350 nautical miles. The 4,000 nautical mile Falcon 2000 LXS, announced in October of 2012, combines the short field performance of the 2000S with the longer range capabilities of the 2000 LX. The airplane will come standard with the Easy 2 avionics suite and Falcon Cabin HD Plus Entertainment System, and customers can specify the interior of their choice. The Falcon 2000 LXS will replace the 2000 LX by the end of 2013. 11 Airplanes of the Czech Republic plans to introduce a new midline model of ultralight light sport aircraft, the Sky Leader 400. The airplane's sports car inspired design, with new features such as a side opening canopy, aggressive cowling, and easy maneuverable landing gear, is targeted directly at sport aviation enthusiasts. The introduction of the new airplane adds to the existing production portfolio, which includes five aircraft types. The first fully flyable red racing color scheme prototype of the Sky Leader 400 will be on display next week at Aero Friedrichshafen in Germany. The prototype was designed and produced in less than two years, and the new aircraft was quietly unveiled on July 14, 2012, at a private event called Sky Leader Day. Sky Leader 400 is a two seat, low wing, all metal construction airframe with a newly designed and shortened fuselage. Customers will have many options to choose from with three equipment packages, starting from analog panels with Rotax 912 UL 80 horsepower engine, up to a full glass cockpit and Rotax 912 IS 100 horsepower fuel injection or a 914 UL turbocharged engine. The company says prices will be competitive with market standards. After recent successful nitrous finning and feather test, Scaled Composites and Virgin Galactic have completed a cold flow flight that representatives of the two companies called Spectacular. The test is seen as another important step towards powered flight. In preparation for Spaceship 2's first powered flight, the test teams from Scaled Composites and Virgin Galactic completed the entire profile of the upcoming milestone flight, apart from actually igniting the rocket. Importantly, and for the first time in the air, oxidizer flowed through the propulsion system and out through the nozzle at the rear of the vehicle, thus successfully accomplishing the cold flow procedure. As well as providing further qualifying evidence that the rocket system is flight ready, the test also provided a stunning spectacle due to the oxidizer trail, and for the first time gave a taste of what Spaceship 2 will look like as it powers to space. The cancellation of the Blue Angels 2013 performance schedule has dealt severe and sometimes knockout blows to air shows and other events around the country this year. The cancellation of the performance at the Hattie Shriners Fest in Evansville, Indiana, the first week of July, prompted that region's representative in Congress to write a letter to Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus, asking that funding for the performances be restored. Representative Larry Bouchon said in his letter that, quote, while I fully support cutting wasteful spending within the Department of Defense, Grounding a low-cost expenditure like the Blue Angels appears politically motivated." End quote. This according to a report appearing in the Evansville, Indiana Courier Press Online.
He said the Department of Defense should look for other ways to cut spending as required by the sequester. Noting $700 million annually in alternative energy research, which he says duplicates efforts by the Department of Energy, and $580 million in global health initiatives, which he says is more than the Center for Disease Control or the National Institute of Health spend on such programs. The organizers of the festival said that the cancellation of the Blue Angels' performance was not unexpected and that an air show will still be a part of the Shrine Fest. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email at news by at aero-news.net. The U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation held a hearing Tuesday titled Aviation Safety, FAA Progress on Key Safety Initiatives. The hearing was called to examine the consequences of sequestration on the FAA, the agency's efforts to implement safety provisions in recent FAA reauthorizations, and the status of the FAA and National Transportation Safety Board's ongoing investigation of the Boeing 787. The panel focused on issues relating to how the sequester will affect air traffic control operations, as well as progress being made to get Boeing's Dreamliner flying again. FAA Director Michael Huerta testified before the panel and insisted that the closure of contract towers would not affect safety. On the issue of the Dreamliner, FAA Administrator Huerta said that a decision on the Dreamliner will come very soon, according to a report appearing in Bloomberg News. Huerta said that while Boeing has completed flight tests on the new battery system, he is not ready to say when the 787 will again be in revenue service. Huerta said in his testimony, quote, The FAA is reviewing the test reports and analysis and will approve the redesign once we are satisfied Boeing has shown the redesigned battery system meets FAA requirements, end quote. An unidentified computer glitch in American Airlines' computerized reservation system, Sabre, caused the airline to ground its fleet for several hours Tuesday afternoon, canceling hundreds of flights and leaving thousands stranded. The intermittent outages originally impacted about 100 American flights and another 100 American Eagle flights, but later spread to the entire airline. Sabre is the airline reservation system that controls flight bookings, online check-ins, printing of boarding passes, and more. Thousands of passengers were left stranded at airports across the country and were left seeking information updates on the airline's website and Facebook page using their smartphones and tablets. American offered to change reservations at no charge for those with flexible travel plans and offered full refunds to those who could not change plans. The trouble started about midday and operations were returning to normal by about 5 p.m. Central Time. Friday here on Airborne means only one thing. And no, we're not talking about TGIF. We're talking about barnstorming, of course. Here is ANN's CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell with this week's commentary. And today, Jim is concerned about a lack of confidence 
and all things aviation. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Okay, let's uh, let's take a little bit of a different tack this week. Just uh, I've been getting uh, quite a few calls and letters and emails from uh, those folks who uh, went a little bit south of us and tried to participate in the annual Lakeland Fly-In. As you know, we don't really cover it much anymore since they decided to get ugly about the fact that they didn't like the way we covered it and tried to tell us how to cover it and then tried to tell us how to cover it in some very unpleasant terms. Well, it's not worth our time and it's not really worth your attention. And by and large, year after year, they prove it. But we're not going to get into that too much because what I did want to talk about was what people found, and I'm talking specifically about the exhibitors, manufacturers, and folks who are in the business and are obviously in the stream of consciousness that is aviation at a major aviation event. And without exception, everybody said the same thing. One, very few people there in comparison to prior years. And the folks who are there showed a distinct lack of confidence in the future of aviation. I don't have to tell you there's a bunch of great reasons for a lack of confidence in aviation, the biggest of which is that aviation is on the bubble. It's in big trouble. It's in danger. And aviation is swirling the drain in so many ways. And if you've been in the aviation business at all in the last few years, you know it's a really tough way to do business. Um, seriously, you know, underwater demolition, much easier, probably even a little safer. You just don't know. But what we're hearing more and more is just this incredible lack of confidence, this feeling that so many folks that go to these flyings or are looking at airplanes, they're looking for their last airplane. They're looking for things that they may not be able to get in a couple of years. They're looking at what they consider to be the last generation of free, private, general aviation. And God help me, they may be right. But it's up to us to prove them wrong. There is a distinct lack of confidence. There's no reason in the world why anybody should look at the aviation industry and consider it to be healthy. Uh, we have an administration that really has decimated all things aviation. We have a political climate that doesn't like aviation. We have a financial climate that doesn't make aviation very affordable. Aviation itself is bereft of, in some cases, uh, good leadership, i.e. folks who just have not done the job or beaten their associations into the ground or associations that are in transition and have yet to really explain to folks what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and how they're going to really make the way forward for their associations and the rest of aviation in a positive way. It's tough out there. And yes, there's a horrible lack of confidence. But the fact of the matter is the main reason we have a lack of confidence is because we keep doing the same thing the same old way and expecting a different result. Einstein called that insanity. So do I. And I'll, let's face it, Albert knew a lot more than I do, so um, you know, I'll definitely give way to anything he has to say on this matter. But we can restore confidence to aviation and restore a future to aviation if we are willing to embrace alternate tactics, if we are willing to be aggressive, if we are willing to be radical, if we are willing to be creative and innovative, but most important, if we are willing to be involved. Very shortly, I want to start talking to you about something that we've been working on for the last couple of years, and in particular, the last few months. And now that we've got a particularly weighty subject off of our backs, we're ready to embrace it, as are some of the best names in aviation, folks that you know and trust, folks that have proven themselves people of integrity. It's time to go for it. It's time to try to save this business. It's time to take this lack of confidence we all feel and substitute it with something we can all have confidence in. For the Aero News Network, Aero TV, and Airborne, I'm Jim Campbell. we got some interesting ideas for you down the line, but only if you, you, participate. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Bradley, the 83rd Fighter Weapons Squadron Director of Operations at Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida, will become Thunderbird No. 1. The squadron's commander and lead pilot for the 2014 demonstration team. General Gilmary M. Hostage III, commander of the Air Combat Command, made the announcement earlier this week. Bradley's duties are twofold, including commanding a force of more than 100 enlisted personnel and 11 commissioned officers assigned to the Thunderbirds, along with leading all demonstration flights. Bradley will replace Lieutenant Colonel Greg Mosley. Other new officers announced include Major Scott Petz, an F-16 pilot stationed at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, 
who will become Thunderbird number three, the team's right wing pilot. Captain Ryan Wick, an F-22 pilot currently stationed at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, will become Thunderbird number six, the team's opposing solo pilot. Captain Joshua Larson, an F-16 pilot currently stationed at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina, will become Thunderbird No. 8, the team's advanced pilot and narrator. The team is still reviewing applications for the position of Thunderbird 9, the team's flight surgeon. An announcement will be made once the selection is finalized. The year 2014 will mark the Thunderbird's 61st season as the Air Force's premier jet demonstration team, if they get to fly. Well, remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. And please join us again next Tuesday for another edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.